It's Grant Flanders back again with the KSO Show here to talk transfers, football transfers. There's 10 of them. There are 10 incoming football transfers to discuss, and I think a lot of them are necessary, if not all of them, um, and all have, you know, something I think uh, I can touch on real quick for a, a little KSO show. So I want to start with the cornerback, Julius Brents. The reason I want to start with him is because I really think he not only is the, you know, probably the best incoming transfer talent-wise um, on the football side of things, but he's also he's also probably he's the most important piece. And, I mean, that might not be surprising to some, uh, usually the best player is the most important piece um, as far as it goes, but this couldn't have been any more important. He's a really, really good player um, from Iowa, uh, you know, and people from those ranks, you know, in the Iowa ranks uh, talked about how he will probably end up in the NFL in the future. Um, plenty of people have discussed that, and the hype only continued once he got into, you know, uh, spring camp um, and everything that involved that sounded like he was easily the best, one of the best players on the team already. Uh, and that, I, yeah, I don't think that's hyperbole. If it is, we'll find out. Um, but that's kind of what has been like how he's been hyped up and just what kind of potential he brings. So really not any more important transfer than Julius Brents out of Iowa um, at the cornerback spot. You know, really big, long player, can uh, cover really well, um, and he's going to probably, you know, him and Echo Boydo probably going to be the starting outside corners, and um, on paper that should work really well. Um, we'll see if, you know, Echo can, can come back into form like he was last year and everything else, but hey, there's also other transfers in the secondary that uh, are very important to making this secondary and making this defense work. So um, that's a guy like Reggie Stubblefield and Sincere Mason. Those two guys um, might fill different roles, but they also could be looked at as either nickel depth or one of them in fall camp could go and grab the nickel position. Um, if Amaris Brown, a guy who Kleiman talked about at Big 12 uh, Media Days as a guy that has been working out at nickel a lot, if Amaris Brown, former safety Amaris Brown, moves to nickel, um, but he's maybe not working out enough, he could be used at depth there, and then Sincere Mason or Reggie Stubblefield could be the starting nickel, depending on uh, how they feel these guys come along in the fall. But Reggie Stubblefield... You can expect him to likely cover either the nickel position or the cornerback spot. We'll see if anything changes in the fall uh, camp, but that's what Kleiman um, made sure to tell us at Big 12 Media Days. And then Sincere Mason, nickel back and safety. So Stubblefield, more of a you know a corner looking to be playing outside or possibly inside at the nickel. Mason could also play inside at the nickel or he could play up top at the safety guard in the back end. So... Um, you have those two guys. How they're probably the biggest question marks. Um, Stubblefield comes from Prairie View A and M, um, and you know there's not there's not a lot of correlation to you know what he can do. Um, you know his film, yeah, he's physical. He's he's he looks like he can play the part, um, but still, it's a it is a different level of football. So it's still an unknown. I think he can play, but we really won't know until we see it. Sincere Mason, I, that's a guy I still you know really need to get to know this fall um, based on hearings what Derek Young hears based on what I see in practices with my own eyes based on what we hear overall at KSO here um, all of these things or you know even in you know other media whatever I hear about Sincere Mason will probably be absorbed by me um, because I just don't know a lot about this guy um, and I you know, I want to believe he's one of the later ads um, and out of Kennesaw State. I want to believe he can step in and be a solid depth piece, and he might need to be in order for the secondary to, to hold up and, and have the, the necessary depth to because you never know about injuries and stuff. We saw how last year unfolded for the secondary. I don't think that's going to happen again for this year, completely different kind of circumstances, but injuries could always take a toll, and that just always depends. So, um, 
We need you, they need a guy like Sincere Mason to step up, and so hopefully, uh, both Stubblefield and Mason can can be in there at least as quality depth because there should be enough up front. Um, unless Amaris Brown doesn't work out at the nickel, there should be enough up front at the starting spots in the secondary for those two just to be quality depth. So hopefully they can be that. Next, let's talk about let's stay in the secondary and talk about Russ Yeast. Uh, the Louisville transfer. He'll probably be a starter right away on the back end unless we hear otherwise throughout fall camp. Um, he's a guy that will be next to Jerron McPherson. Um, I believe at the free safety position, and McPherson plays strong safety. He might be getting this, those mixed up, but I believe that's probably where we see those guys um, end up. And there's even a practice. You know, you'll probably hear this either uh, – Friday night or Saturday morning um, before, if you're hearing this before the, the practice that we attend, we might be able to get a glimpse of what these guys can do a little bit. But really, uh, the most stuff that we will know about them is hearing from, you know, sources, um, whether inside the program or close to the program. So, um, but at any rate, we will always keep tabs on what these guys are looking like in practice and stuff. But Russie's back in, out, uh, transfer out of Louisville. I think, you know, he, he could be a solid piece. Um, he's, he's, he's got a lot of starts. He's got a lot of experience. That's important. And that's something that I think that will be necessary in the back end. I don't think he's going to be as good as a Julius Brents. He's, uh, I mean, but that no one really is this season besides maybe like Deuce Vaughn on the whole team. I don't know if there's many people, uh, that can compare to at least the hype. And I mean, the, 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 there is film. That's the thing is it's, it's anecdotal. There's plenty of evidence out there that Brents can play. Um, you know, I think he's dealt with some injury in his past, but there's there's film out there at Iowa of him playing corner, and he's a really good player. Um, Yeast is a really solid safety, I think, too. He's got some experience. He started at Louisville, um, and he's been a, a solid. He was a solid player for them. I I just don't. I'm not ready to say he's going to be you know ultra stud. I, I I expect more out of him as a starter than I do you know sincere Mason and Stubblefield coming in um, from you know lower lower levels um whether that be the fcs i think both are the fcs um in kennesaw state and prairie view and a and m so that's two teams coming from lower level programs i don't expect a ton from them hopefully they can be reliable depth russ yeast i expect him to be a starter but i just don't expect him to be a stud and he very well could turn into it but um for now i think he's just going to be a solid piece on that back end but this is also one of the biggest question marks and that's why it, there's so many question marks in the secondary is because of what happened last year with, you know, the, t everything that happened, they had the pieces, they just fell apart. Um, and then that's why they had to get a whole new group to, you know, fill in that back end with, the, um, on the secondary side of things. So we'll see, we will see how that, that's one of the biggest question marks of wait and see of how that whole group turns out to look. I think, Front line should be really good or at least really solid, especially with a couple of players like Julius Prince. I think Echo Boy Doe and Jerron McPherson should all be very consistent players. Um, Russ Yeast and the rest of those guys, wait and see for me. And um, that will be, you know, a decider on the defense to see if it holds up. Eric Munoz, uh, you know, continuing on on the defensive side of things, I'll touch on him real quick. I don't expect him to make a big splash this season. You know, solid player. Um, uh, where he was at at Utah State, um, if I were, I'm, I'm recalling correctly, uh, you know, he was a solid player. Uh, you know, I think his film, you know, at that level is good. I mean, it's, it, he's, I just don't think he's going to be ready to, you know, be a, a Big 12 starting linebacker. Quality depth, that's possible, and, and I think that's what they're hoping he turns out to be. But I think Daniel Green and Cody Fletcher um, two experienced K-Staters now um, will assume those starting roles. And, I mean, from what, you know, you hear from Kleiman and other sources and stuff like that, it seems like um, it seems like Green and Fletcher will be playing a lot of snaps. So that might even point to what direction Eric Munoz is going. I think, you know, he's a solid, obviously he's a great uh, team leader. I, I truly believe that. Very experienced guy. Just don't know if he's ready to be on the field a lot this coming season. Um, remains to be seen. We'll see if that changes uh, during fall ball. Now let's talk about Timmy Horn. This is a guy that will, um, you know, he might he might be second to Julius Brents as far as hype goes in transfers. 
Uh, Timmy Horn is someone that is going to start, is going to play a lot of snaps. I assume he'll start. That's the thing is that's still an unknown because Jalen Pickle could also be a starting defensive tackle. Um, and I don't, you know, depending on how they're lining up, we'll see how they line up. They could, you know, play play and start two defensive tackles um, like we've seen in the past. That, uh, But we'll see if they do that this season and, or how they deploy them. Regardless, Timmy Horn's going to be a force. He's a big-bodied guy, uh, Play can really, you know, I think disrupt things. You know, he played at Charlotte, so, um, you know, still uh, – not you know coming from Iowa like Julius Brents is, but it is interesting because he it seems as if he can play big time football you know big uh, Big Twelve football uh, from what sources have said seeing him in practice and everything else so that's all very important that's all good to hear as well. Um, I think that's covering all the defenders unless I'm mistaken. I know we got Mason Stubblefield, Brents, um. Uh, Munoz yeah I think that's all the defenders so let's move on to the offensive side of the ball I think we on that side we have one two three four we have four uh, offensive transfers so six defensive transfers four offensive transfers in the four R let's start with Daniel and matter Bebe uh, or as Bebe is like K-State likes to call him he's the tight end I think he's going to be a very very um, important piece, you know, he's filling in and he's going to try to be as good at put up as good of production as Briley Moore was able to do last season, if not better, because a matter baby should have more consistent, uh, quarterback play. If Skylar Thompson's able to stay healthy. Um, also, you know, if, uh, Will Howard were to have to step in is a much better quarterback than he was a season ago. If those things are true, matter baby should be more productive than Briley Moore. We'll see if he's, you know, as dynamic. That remains to be seen. Um, you know, he's played, you know, a little bit, but dealt with a lot of injuries over his career. So we'll see if he's able to be a viable option for Skylar Thompson and be a, a security blanket for these guys because that's what Riley Moore was last year for Will Howard, was a security blanket and actually did um, con allow Howard to convert a few positive plays here and there. Um in a season without him, I mean, without Bradley Moore, would have been even that much rougher uh, looking for for um, Will Howard. So, I do believe um, a matter baby could be a giant piece for this team. We'll see if him and Sammy Wheeler can figure things out at the tight end spot. The biggest key I think for Bebe uh, will be his health. Um, he stayed healthy so far, working out with the team. We'll see if that continues through you know fall ball and into the season because he could be major. Um, I think he's probably the biggest piece, you know, biggest addition on the offensive side of the ball. But we cannot discount another pass catcher in Tyrone Howell, wide receiver out of Hutchinson Community College. You know, uh, he's going to be expected to come in and play right away. Derek Young's put it on the site recently. Um, we have sources indicating that this man is ready, is already uh, making waves in practice. Um, you know, he did throughout the summer workouts and stuff, and I'm sure, you know, through fall ball, we're going to continue to hear positive things on that front. Don't know if he's going to be ready to jump in as a number one wide receiver. Probably talk about more of that on a position preview of wide receivers later on. But I do think he's going to have the ability to really uh, go up, make plays, and be a guy that is a consistent receiver, which is something they need um, and something that they'll really want from every single receiver. Howell, Malik Knowles, and uh, including uh, Chabaston Taylor, they're like all three of those guys, maybe even Philip Brooks, to, to be consistent receivers, make the catches when necessary, um, and it could turn this into a more special season. Wide receiver was a very, very struggling position last season, and Howell all of a sudden makes it that much more, um, I think, respectable. Cade Warner, and the wide receiver uh, out of Nebraska, you know, I think he's going to be a solid locker room guy. Ex, um, you know, experienced in, in that respect, not a ton of experience on the field, and I don't expect him to get on the field very much for K-State. Um, so that one uh, is more of a wait and see. If he pops off, that will would be one of the more surprising ones. But also Kingsley Uglu, the tackle from Hutchinson Community College, um, also, you know, part of that Dragons uh, championship with uh, Tyrone Howell. Um, whereas Howell is expected to play right away, Kingsley Uglu, 
it's probably um, not his year this season. You know, they want to, you know, prepare him. He's got a couple of years of eligibility, uh, two or three. They want to prepare him um, to be, you know, quality depth or possibly take that tackle position starting spot next year. If he surprises, takes that spot this year, um, you know, and beats out Carver Willis um, and, and is able to shift Cooper BB inside with whatever guard they decide to go with him, that would be very ideal um, and would be great and speak volumes of what Kingsley Ugu is doing. Um, but also, you know, Willis is, is I think, going to be tough competition there. would also be good to see him take that spot. And I think there would be a better chance Willis takes that spot than Ugu. But Ugu is more, you know, of a wait-and-see type of a piece. But also the, they like the potential he has, good size. Um, you know, you know. The more sound he becomes and the more practice he does, the more reps he gets even in practice with, you know, this Power 5 Kansas State staff will only do him wonders. And I think a full season of that could have him then next year really looking at possibly rival or rivaling uh, Willis or whoever else for a tackle spot. Subscribe to K-State Online, uh, which is, you know, the rival's K-State website. You can also subscribe to this YouTube. That's free. Um, the YouTube is free to subscribe to. It really helps us out, so please do if you don't mind. And I think that's just going to wrap it up, so thank you so much for listening. I'm Grant Flanders from k Online. Tell your friends. <laughs>